Another Snap Tackle Pod. Welcome to it. I'm Mick Schaefer of 41 Action News. He is Dion Clisseau of PrepsKC.com. How you doing, sir? Doing well. Uh, we're a third of the way through the season on the Missouri side and and, That's getting, amazing. and almost That's getting there on the Kansas side after this week. A third of the way through, yeah. Three yeah. of nine games, I guess. It's still hot. It is still hot out there. <laughs> Kids are still cramping. Yeah. But uh, but they're just moving through the season. As Kansas says, two weeks in, Missouri has three weeks in. Give me a big surprise. What's a big surprise? What's something that you thought in August would or wouldn't happen that's just taking a 180 and, and occurred this? Because high school football is always so unpredictable. Well, I mean, Harrisonville's 0-3, and, and they have not. That's looked, a shocker. They have not looked good doing it. I thought they were going to be a little bit better than they were this time last year, but they actually, you know, they lost to Blue Valley Northwest, who they beat last year. Uh, Carney is one and two. Uh, they they beat Harrisonville in week one. Felt pretty good about that. Got crushed by by uh, Staley the next week, and then just got crushed by Platte County last week. I mean, that Platte County Carney game is always close. Mm-hmm. It's always a good game, and they they give up thirty one points in the first half. And um, you know, I, I, that's that's a team I think will be better as the season goes on. But the, those two teams right there in Class Four in Missouri, which is very competitive, and I even go so far as to say Smithville being three and zero, oh, they replaced eleven starters. On defense, and that that's a that's a big number, but they've really done a good job of replacing those guys and, and getting it moving. On the Kansas side, you know, really, Shawnee Mission West getting a win over Shawnee Mission South. I, I feel like Shawnee Mission South was a team that could win five, six, seven games yeah. again this year. I, I figured that Shawnee Mission West was getting better, and, and they were going to get a win. I just didn't see it against Shawnee Mission South. I mean, that was a week I didn't see it happening. So they and Blue Valley Northwest both, both broke, broke long losing streaks. It was 20 for Shawnee Mission West and 13 for Blue Valley Northwest. Man. So, yeah, I mean, those, are the, those are the games right there that last week that definitely kind of jumped the, the Harrisonville, Blue Valley Northwest, and the Shawnee Mission West, Shawnee Mission yeah. South game. And those are two programs, especially Shawnee Mission West, that, that, that are strangers to lose. I mean, you yeah. mentioned before, seven years removed from a, from a title for the Vikings. Yeah, they – they did a fantastic job there in you know in 2012 winning a title and Tim Callahan still there they just you know they ran through a, a stretch of, of time where they had just injuries and their numbers weren't great and now they're kind of coming back and I, I expected them to get a win you know they went two full regular seasons last year I didn't expect them to go in nine and mm-hmm. they did um, so they're they, you know they've already got the win out of the way you know their, their schedule doesn't help them out any I mean the Sunflower League they had Olathe North this week and um, they'll definitely be tested there because Olathe North after beating Olathe East. The first week, only by seven points, they come around and just you know get a hammer on Shawnee Mission North, score sixty eight points, and so you know Shawnee Mission West they'll enjoy their win, but they've got a really big task in front of them this mm-hmm. week. Absolutely. Uh, also from last week, Blue Springs and Lee Summit North. Lee Summit North they doubled down. They got back to back wins now. Yeah, and games. you know it was a great spot for them because they got beat the first week by Liberty North. They play St. Joe Central the next week. They they run over them, so they get their confidence back. Blue Springs is coming off of just a huge win over Rockers that went down to the last play, basically. Uh, so emotionally, it's tough for them to kind of get that back up. And I mean, you know, Lee Summit and, and Blue Springs came out very well. They start out up fourteen nothing, and then they just kind of you know after that it was all mm-hmm. Lee Summit North. So hats off to Lee Summit North for bouncing back. They did it without Keon Mosey, their their star running back. So they've got some things going there, and, and they've but they turn right around and. Uh, play Park Hill this week, who's coming off a loss to Liberty North. So yeah. they're they're going to go right into the same kind of buzzsaw that they went into, uh, or that that Blue Springs kind of got at their place. So they're you know they're going on the road, they're going to Park Hill, and I had a a, a good friend of mine call me and and talk to me and said, well, who's so I guess Liberty North the best team in Class Six in Kansas City, and I go this week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean that's the way it is. It's whoever's. Going to be playing well at the end is the, are the ones that are going to be standing. You know, Liberty North has got Liberty this week in a rivalry yep. game. So I mean, there's, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if Liberty yep. beats them. I mean, You're it's right. just, it's just one of those deals. So I, I think it's on the Missouri side is very balanced in Class Six. Uh, it is, and uh, I think last year we saw Lee Summit North get the win over Blue Springs, and I believe the next week they, yeah, lost, they lost. Right? Yeah. Do you expect maybe a for 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 Mosey's team that they're maybe. Ready for that more, yeah, more think, condition that, that, to handle the spotlight or so to speak, you know, a big win like that better than they did last yeah, year. Yeah, and they they were playing a Park Hill team that was that was coming off uh, like I think they were one and two at the time. So yeah. it, it was tough to look across the you know thing and say oh they're they're really good. I mean that being said, the the one thing that I think that is big in this game is. Park Hill has the athletes to match the speed that Lee Summit North has. And so the matchup wise, Blue Springs may be a better matchup for Lee Summit North mm-hmm. than Park Hill is. And so that's that's where the the situation to me is 
it, it's just, you know, the, the, you know, I say Liberty North's the best team this week. Well, they've won the matchup games the first three weeks. Yeah. And, and, and they, you know, they may run into a matchup that's not good for them. That doesn't mean they're not very good. I, hey, I'll be real honest with you. There are 10 teams that are ranked in Class 6, and we do, do the Missouri media rankings. I had CBC and DeSmet at 1 and 2. I had Joplin at 3 and 7 Kansas City teams really? after, including Ray Pack, who went to Rockhurst and, and played tough, and they're 2 and 1. So, you know, at least I'm at Liberty, the only ones on the outside looking looking in. And Blue Spring South, of course, but they're 0 and 3. But at least I'm at Liberty aren't bad teams. and yep. they're, they're solid teams. So it, it's – it's legitimate. Do I think that there's somebody in that group who's good enough to win a state championship? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just Met and CBC look really good. Joplin, I don't know about them. They've just beaten Webb City and, and Carthage, which are two pretty good teams, but they haven't played anybody in Class 6. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if they're anybody's one or two, but they may be three through <laughs> three through nine. Yeah, no, and, and, and there's a great chance that uh, one or two of those teams kind of break through and make a run to uh Yeah, it depends on, depend on the brackets. Game. I mean, Blue Springs has got set up to where they're on the on the right side of the bracket, mm-hmm. and they've got a good chance to, to go no matter where they're at. Uh, over on the Kansas side, Lawrence took down Shawnee Mission East yeah, last week. Were you surprised by that? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I had Coach Steve Rampey in from Lawrence and Coach Justin Hoover from Shawnee Mission East, and on on my radio show and and they both I think that Coach Rampy feels like maybe his team's still a year away, um, but they're playing good football. And East, you know, they had they had struggles, you know, against Gardner Edgerton. That's a you never know when you look at that game that stopped after a quarter with Lawrence leading seven to nothing, and then they come back on Friday. Mm-hmm. Afternoon. You don't know. So I'd I'd like to say that's a it's a good omen for Lawrence, but I'm not ready to. To be done with Shawnee Mission East because that was a Thursday game. Thursday game that stopped. Up on yeah, there was three games that got stopped yeah. and had to finish, and and pretty much two of the three were kind of close games, and and one team just pulled away and, yeah. and won easily, and the third one was already out of hand. Shawnee Mission Northwest was was up twenty eight nothing on Leavenworth, so that was pretty much a done deal before they finished that one up. So, yeah, it's uh, you know I, I, I'm curious to see this week. It's one of our Remax Big Three games. Is Lawrence going to Gardner Edgerton? Yeah, because Gardner Edgerton looks fantastic. They do. I mean, and and this is going to be one of their tougher um, games that they'll play early on. So this is you know this is a test for this young Lawrence team. You know where are they at? You know what you know in terms of their development because they they really were playing a ton of sophomores last year. So they're still yeah. playing a ton of juniors. Yeah. It's funny. Last year we we kind of went with the narrative from Gardner Edgerton that oh uh, the, the, a weak schedule got yeah. them to ten to ten and zero, but they did beat ten six A teams yeah. out of thirty two. If that's all a weak schedule, then okay, a lot of Kansas is quote unquote weak. Yeah, they didn't play. The top one, two, or three teams, maybe at all, until the very end. But still, I mean, you, you got to have a pulse to go ten and up. Well, and and that's that was a team that was kind of like Lawrence this year, full of juniors, um, yeah. that was talented, and and they came in and and took advantage of what was in front of them. I mean, you know, you could say soft schedule all you want, but you still got to go out there and beat them. And it wasn't yeah. like they were winning two point games every week. They were they were hammering people and and doing a good job and beating some solid teams. I mean, I think Shawnee Mission Northwest is a team like them. Last year was loaded with a lot of sophomores, and they beat them, and they, they beat Olathe South, who had a pretty good uh, senior quarterback. So, I mean, they, they've got some good wins from last year, and I think they're going to be a team to look at this year. Uh, the question is, is will they, you know, the, the, the problem for some of the Sunflower League teams is if your schedule isn't as tough at times, mm-hmm. you end up you end up running into a Blue Valley North or a Blue Valley or a, or a Blue Valley West this year who's just, you know, battle-tested coming out of the EKL. So that'll be the question there. But I think, you know, Olathe North is another team in the in the in in 6A you know, if if they can keep Arlen Bruce healthy at quarterback, he's going to touch the ball a lot. I think they're a dangerous team. Oh, like the North plays Shiny Mission West this week. Who, who's the class of the Sunflower? Give me the top three teams. I'm going to go Gardner. Uh, Olathe North, and right now it's uh, Lawrence after two weeks, and and that says a lot about. Are Lawrence. they better than Free State? Free State got beat by Olathe East. Last yeah, that's week. true. That's true. Uh, and that was a stunner. That that was a stunner. Um, but it leads more credence to Olathe East only losing to Olathe North by seven. So Olathe East may be a little bit better yep. than than yep. we thought going in. And you know Jesse O and their coach has been there the last few years, and it's been kind of a tough rebuild for them over that time. They've had some moments and, and played well in spots. They just had a hard time getting over the hump and finishing games, and they did against Free State. Bishop Miege goes to Mill Valley. That's another REMAX uh, Big 3 game of the week. Um, Mill Valley getting a win last week. Bishop Miege, good win over Blue Valley West. Uh, at Mill Valley, Jack's got a chance in this one? Well, they, you know, <laughs> in the Big 3 video, I said that they really got to take the air out of the ball, and and they've got to run it, and they got to play defense, and not let Miege on the field because Miege looks like they're back yeah. to scoring as quick yeah. as they can. And, and forty-eight get, last week, yeah, forty-eight last the... week. 
Defensively, I think Miege is you know they're breaking in a lot of new players, so you could maybe get them a little bit on that side. But you got to you got to stop them. Yeah. I mean, you got to you got to keep the ball and stop them. So that that's the the two biggest things for Mill Valley. Is they've got to keep a hold of the ball, and then, yeah. then what they do when they've got a chance to get that three and out, they've got them in a third and long. They got to get those Mill Valley next three games: uh, Bishop Miege, St. Thomas Aquinas, Blue Valley North. All right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on four eight champ, five eight champ. 6A runner-up. Um, all right, on the Missouri side, Staley and Park Hill South. Really like what the Panthers are doing. Well, year. and Park Hill South goes out in week one and, and gets crushed by Ray Pack, 35 to nothing. And, you know, you hear, you know, it's week one, so you don't know um, how those teams will come out. And, you know, one looks, you know, maybe has a little more senior, so they look better in week one than another team. But then they come back and they come back on Platte County and then they get a win last week and and so they're two and one they're probably you know they're on the outside looking in in terms of what Staley's doing Staley's looking like they're really getting it going uh, mm-hmm. they've 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 got a, their quarterback Dawson Parks has done a fantastic job and um, Shelton the receivers having putting up big numbers and they've got four or five tailbacks who are really doing a good job for them so they're the one thing about Staley is is that everybody's playing them close in the first half and then they're just blowing them out I mean yeah. Truman played them close in week one and then they blew them out they played car they were behind Carney and then they blew them out they were close with Lee Summit and then they blew them out so you know the the longer you hang around I mean the longer they let teams hang around somebody might hang around on them mm-hmm. um, but you know I think that Offensively, it seems like it takes them a while to get going. Defensively, they're fine, but Park Hill South really did a good job of of bouncing back from that Ray Peck loss. And you know, the Ray Peck loss looks pretty good now. I mean, Ray Peck's two and one played Rockers tough last week. So, you know, I, is Park Hill? I don't know if Park Hill South's good enough to challenge, say, North Kansas City or Staley in that district. But they've got some wins out there for them that that maybe they didn't seem to, you know, you didn't think going in. You know, I'm sure they didn't. A lot of people weren't thinking Platte County was a win for them, and they yeah. got that that game and came back on Platte County big time. So. Definitely a good spot for them to kind of just see where they're at. Uh, they've got a new coach in Alan Wilmus, uh, who, who took who's who was the assistant who took over this year, and and so they've um, not much has changed in terms of that. Maybe some new assistant coaches, things like that. But they've got a chance to kind of take a step forward because the last few years they've really struggled. Grain Valley, Platte County. This is the makings of a good one. Well, if you like offense, this should be a pretty good game. Both I like teams, offense. Both these teams can really score. Uh, last week, Grain Valley got on the first team to score against Smithville, and it, it got away from him in the end. Smithville just kind of ran away at the end, but they were kind of going back and forth with him through the, about the middle of the third quarter. The, the question is how are they going to come off that? And Platte County, who just dominated Kearney, it, you know, do they come out flat? I mean, after a dominating win, you, Grain Valley's got to be hungry coming off that loss to Smithville. So, the, you know, two good quarterbacks in this. Cole Keller from Grain Valley is an outstanding quarterback, and and – Run key, that's how you, I think you say the play. They always have a quarterback, and he, I they mean, do. And he's the new guy who just stepped in. So, uh, you know, two good quarterbacks playing, and it should be it should be a, a pretty good game. I, I, you know, both coaches know what they're doing, and and Bill Lutz at Platte County and David Alley at Green Valley, two good staffs, and they've been around doing it the right way a long time. So that, it's a fun one in Class Four, and you never know. Like last week, Green Valley Smithville could have been a quarterfinal preview. This could be a quarterfinal preview. Uh, because I think Grain Valley is probably the class of their district and has probably has a good chance of coming out of that district, whereas Platte County, Smithville, Excelsior, Kearney mm-hmm. are all in that other district. So anytime Grain Valley plays anybody from the other district, it could be a, <laughs> it could be a preview. Man, uh, week four already for yeah. the uh, Missouri side of things. All right, Center and Van Horn on your Remax Big Three. Uh, That's an intrigue one. The, the, the Center undefeated. Van Horn, the, it's but the Falcons, right? Falcons yeah. are 3-0 yeah. as well. Um, their level of competition probably hasn't been the same as, as Center. Center beat Clinton bad the first week of the season. Clinton's horrible. Then they beat St. Joe Lafayette by, by you know, two touchdowns, and that game wasn't even that close. Uh, and then last week they go handle Oak Grove, who's, who'd been playing well, who beat Lawson in week one and played with Blair Oaks for a half, who's the number one team in class three. Center just looks like they're playing outstanding football. Van Horn went to overtime with East in week one, but then really took care of what they needed to take care of. And they're similar type type teams in terms of, of – Clientele and 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 the the kids on those on those teams, a lot of athletes, but they're both really well coached. I yeah. mean, that's that's one of those things that, that that has taken Van Horn and made them able to be successful. They, they do need to do something about their schedule. They play in a league that's not very good. Um, they really at Summit Christian and then them, mm-hmm. and so and so they have to kind of fill their schedule. And they've got Win Tonk on their schedule later this year. Uh, and they, you know they pick up center. That's I mean that they're, they're doing that because their conference is only four teams and and University Academy's down right now and. Uh, you know, so and Bishop Ward is is not won a game in like six years. So I mean, that's it's not a great conference. You're not getting those games every. So year. Ward's in that conference. Well, Ward's in Kansas that conference, Missouri yeah. conference. Okay, yeah. so that's that's where they struggle there. But center, you know, Brian DeLong, great guy, good friend. 
he he's great at talking down his team in sense <laughs> of, of lowering expectations, and they're always good. And going into St. Joe Lafayette, he's like, oh, I don't know how we're gonna stop that team. They beat us last year. I don't know how we're gonna stop, them. and they just ran over. Him. And then they go to hmm. a Grove and do the same thing. And and I'm like, y- you might be pretty good, uh, but you know I, they've got some high standards there. They were in the quarterfinals a couple different times, <laughs> and uh, had a guy named Malik Collins who's playing for the. Dallas Cowboys, Cowboys. Played, playing for the team. They've, they've had some really good players over the years. That DeLong's been there now. He's in his 10th season. And, you know, I, they've got high standards, and, and, and they really want to do well. Unfortunately for them, they're in the same district with Odessa, who's scored about 55 points a game and has been scored on yet. <laughs> and they got Kansas City Central this week, so I doubt they'll get scored on this week. But you Odessa know, hasn't given them a, a point. They have a point, and I don't know if they will. I mean, I don't – I mean – it's all what they want to do with their twos. I mean, their ones aren't going to give up any points. I don't think they can't say Central. And uh, if we'll see what their twos and threes do. Uh, they play Oak Grove next week. I think they're surely up. the rivals are going. to I would get think in Oak Grove zone. will get them, but then, but then you know that now you're looking at say you know Harrisonville isn't very good. <laughs> you know, Warrensburg's three and zero, Excelsior's three and zero. So those are teams that I would think it's when you when you start breaking down a team like well, will they get scored on? Yeah. Not will they get beat? And, and that's a you know that's a big jump three weeks in. But Odessa looks un, unbelievable right now. I. And if you want to, you want to play the, you know, the six degrees of separation score wise, they put sixty. They won. They beat Holden sixty seven to nothing. Uh, Boonville and Holden played a tough game, and Boonville just played Blair Oaks as the number one team to within two touchdowns. Really? So I, you know, did they catch Holden? Is Holden that Holden maybe played the game of their life against Boonville and then just got mm-hmm. trucked by Odessa? You don't know. But when you start drawing the lines, <laughs> you're kind of like, I don't know. Maybe yeah. Odessa's the top team. Blair Oaks is really good. They're defending Class Two state champions. But now Odessa's off to an unbelievable start. What are some names, not just team, but individual names? As hey, if we're getting closer to the end of the season, we're getting closer to Simone <laughs> time, right? Who are some names that have come across? You've come across in all the stats because you guys are so good at keeping track of the stats, live stats on uh, on on Friday nights that you could just keep seeing this kid at running back or this kid throwing the ball. Who's who's out there that could, we could be seeing uh, holding a big trophy at the end of the year? Well, you know, Joe Campbell got off to a good start, but he didn't play this last week, so he's already kind of down in that spot there for Raytown. Uh, Arlen Bruce, of course. You know, Ty- Tank Young over at, at Aquinas. Aquinas. He's not. He's getting like twelve carries a game. I mean, and, <laughs> but probably still going over hundred. Yeah, yards, he's going over hundred yards. They'll get in some games where he's going to break off some two hundred yard games, and, and you see that Bryson Cobbins over at uh, Bishop Miege, of course. Then you look at like Daniel Jackson and and Shelton, the receiver from uh, um, Staley, are off to great starts in terms of receiving. So those are guys I'm keeping an eye on right now. It, it's it's so early. And we don't really have the big time passing quarterbacks right now. Um, you got Jake Wolf at Blue Valley, who's a junior. Henry Martin, who's a sophomore yeah. at uh, at Blue Valley North. They they put up pretty good numbers. The, the Miege quarterback put up great numbers. Dorsey, I think, is his name. Mm-hmm. Put up great numbers last week. So he's he's a guy to keep an eye on. So it's you've had different guys each week. Um, the the Teven kid, I think, at uh, Gardner's had some good weeks rushing the ball too. So. You've had some guys each week who've, who've done that. You'll start to see some – you get about four or five weeks in, you start to see some trends, some guys who had big weeks in week one yep. against bad teams in non-conference. Yep. When they get in the conference, that's where you start to see um, – Van Dyne, the quarterback at, at uh, Liberty North, his numbers aren't huge, but they're winning games. And that's the deal, yeah. He's a huge part yeah. of it. He's a huge part of it. I mean, he's putting up you know about 200 yards passing. They've got good running backs. And it's, you know – and he's making the right decision, putting them in the right situation. So that's a guy to keep an eye on too. All right, what what uh, what games are we going to be getting to out at uh, to, on from Preps KC and Forty One Action News? I think I know. Yeah, our big game is Mill Valley Bishop Miege. Okay, um, and a couple others. What? Who are you well, we'll be at the, at the Remax Big Three games. Still trying to ratchet down the Kansas side. There's some games out there that, uh, like maybe a Spring Hill. And Bonner Spring, we're throwing kind of, some frontier. League, yeah, right? and that's and that's a that's an intriguing game to me because Spring Hill's off to a two and zero start. Bonner's one and one. Um, they're a team. You know, the, part of the problem is you get a week where you get some good teams against some mm-hmm. struggling teams, and it's tough to you, you want to be able to highlight teams, but you don't want to just go out there. You don't want you don't want to go out there and have you know a Piper hang sixty on somebody because that's not really fair to the other team yeah. when you cover them that way. You want to try and get them in spots where they're competitive. On the Missouri side, we got Liberty, Liberty North. We've got. Of course, Park Hill, Lee Summit North on top of the big three. Uh, Lee Summit, Blue Springs. Um, we're, you know, Center and Oak Grove, which is a Saturday game, and that's going to be really fun to do. Uh, so those are kind of some of the games we've got going uh, this week. Of course, you know, I think Rockers, Blue Springs South, that should be a, a pretty easy Rockers win. Though Blue Springs South is playing better uh, out there. Uh, the, you know, Lee Summit West and 
Belton. You know, Raypex playing Belton. Belton's off to a bad start. They're, they do not look good. They got crushed by Fort Osage last week. Fort Osage, North Kansas City is an interesting game. Uh, that Yeah, how would you figure out Fort Osage this year? Well, you know, they didn't look very good in week one when they lost to Rachel South. Then they go and get hammered by Lisa Summit West. Well, they're not as good as Lisa Summit West, so that's what happened there. And they come back and they hammer Belton. Okay, they should hammer Belton. We're going to find out a lot about them and North Kansas City. North Kansas City is off to a 3-0 start, just taking, just, yeah. just handling stuff. I mean, just beating Ruskin, beating Belton, doing what they got to do. You know, teams that aren't good, they're beating them bad, yeah. and that's what you got to do. So this will be a, a – this is – Fort Osage is definitely better than Ruskin and Belton. Uh, so this is going to be a test for North Kansas City. So that's another interesting game this week on the Missouri side. Sounds like a plan. Check it out on PrepsKC.com and 41 Action News on Friday nights as we cover the kids in Missouri side's high school football. Thanks for coming in, Dion. It's always fun. This has been Snap Tackle Pod.